Namaskar and welcome all my teacher friends. As teachers, we have to play a number of different roles in our schools. A big part of our role as a teacher is subject teaching. But apart from subject teaching, we do a lot of things. We interact with the students around us. We deal with a class as a class teacher. And through all these different activities, we shape students into better and capable individuals for their future life. The classroom interactions which we have with the children are fairly complicated and we need to have a great number of skills to deal better with the children in our class. So classroom management is a very important skill that we need to learn as teachers of the future. Classroom management involves a number of small techniques and psychological principles. If we know all these, if we keep all these in mind in our day to day work as teachers, it will definitely sharpen our skills, it will definitely help us to work better and perform better as teachers. So let us uh, study classroom management for the next few days. The course which we bring to you includes um, number one, setting rules and procedures for your class, number two, class control, number three, communication in your class. Number four, managing student misbehavior. And the fifth module deals with how to conduct class meetings. So we look forward to a very fruitful interaction with all of you. And we hope that this course related to classroom management benefits you to be better teachers. Setting rules and procedures. As a teacher, why do we need to set rules in the class? There are two reasons behind it. The first one being that we need to create a group feeling in the class. When all the students in our class behave in a certain pattern, follow a common set of rules together, then they get the we feeling about the class. They feel that I belong to the class. And as class teachers, we need to create this belongingness about the class in the minds of the children. This is the first reason. The second reason why we set rules in our class is very simple. It is that we need to prepare the children mentally to be in school. Following the rules given in the school prepares the children to get into the learning mode mentally. So when I reach school as a student and I follow the set of rules which are made in the class for me, it prepares my mind to get into the learning mode, to get into the classroom mode and forget all that which I have just done before reaching the school. So psychologically, setting these rules helps the children to create a group feeling, a class feeling and it helps them to get ready for the learning activity in the class. We need to remember three main things when we prepare a set of rules for our class. The first thing being that we should not make too many rules for the class. I've seen many teachers who have a whole big list of rules for their class and there's a great possibility that none of them will be ultimately followed. So what should we do? It's very simple. We should maximum make say three or five rules for our class. We should keep them simple and short. The second thing is that the rules should be stated in very clear and specific words. What do you want the child to do exactly? It should be unambiguous. When the child reads the rule, it should be clearly understandable for him. And the third point which we need to remember is that the rule should be stated in positive words. For example, we do not tell the children, do not talk in the class, but we tell them, keep silence in the class. We do not tell the children, do not litter around in the class, but we say, maintain cleanliness in the class. So if rules are stated carefully, if they are put up in some visible place in the class in clear terms and specific terms, then we can really create a good atmosphere in the class for the children. Once we have prepared a set of rules for the class, now we need to ensure that the rules are followed by the students throughout the year, which is another difficult task for a teacher. It happens many a times that the beginning of the year takes off very well. We have a nice set of rules. The children are in a great enthusiasm. The teacher is equally careful. But as the year proceeds, as month by month passes by, everyone forgets everything about the rules and things get complicated. So what should we do as a class teacher? It's very simple. We need to take a weekly review of these rules in the class. Do we have a weekly meeting in our class? 
Do we spend 10 minutes every week in our class to check whether all students are following these rules which we have set for the class or not? Remember, if we do not take the weekly review with our students, making the list of rules in the first place itself is rendered meaningless. So we need to take a weekly review. It's very, very important. As we take a weekly review with the children, we need to enforce rule abiding behavior. There will definitely be a lot of children in your class who follow these rules, who like to have a pat on their back from their teacher. Without fail, appreciate these children. It is not necessary that we always give some prize. Even verbal appreciation matters to the students. And the other thing is without fail, take note of children who do not follow the rules. It's not necessary we punish them always, but even if the child gets a message that the children has that the teacher has noticed me not following the rule, it will be enough. Why is the weekly review so important? The weekly review is very important to keep your grip on your class. It gives you a total control of your class. If the set rules of the class are being followed properly by the children, then you can rest assured as a teacher that nothing is much wrong with the class. The moment you know that the set rules of the class are not being followed properly, it is an alarm for you. Then you can surely conclude that something is going on in the class, some undercurrent, something under the surface is wrong and you need to pay attention to it. So the weekly review of our rules is extremely important. Apart from these rules we set in the class, we also need to set some little procedures in our classroom. What are these procedures? These are simple routine activities. For example, the children need to have a habit that as soon as the teacher enters the class, they should stand up and wish the teacher. For example, they need to develop a habit that as soon as I enter the class, they should open the books of my subject. They should clean the board, for example. They should sit straight. They should get in an alert body position when the teacher enters the class. Some teachers, especially language teachers or mathematics teachers, can develop a routine procedure of some kind of recitation in their class. So when your maths teacher enters the class, you are supposed to recite some mathematical formulae or some tables. When your language teacher enters the class, you recite some verses, some poems or so on. Uh, people think that these procedures really do not matter much, but they go a long, long way in shaping the personalities of our children. How do they help? Uh, number one, these routine procedures prepare the children for the learning activity which is going to come. They put the children in the mode of your subject. Remember that before my period, the children have had another class just and they have to switch from that subject to my subject. So this little routine procedure in my class will help them to switch over from the previous subject to my subject. The second important reason is that these little daily procedures go on to develop habits and later on also cultivate attitudes among the students in our class. I've seen that some language teachers insist that the children should have good handwriting. They make it a point that the children do a little part of some handwriting practice in the beginning of the class. So over years when the children are trained to do this every day in and day out, the children develop wonderful handwriting. And it comes as a result of this procedure. Children learn to respect their elders. They learn to stand up when anybody enters the class. And they learn to respect the feeling that comes with it because of this routine procedure. So routine procedures are not just routine procedures. They lead to the cultivation of certain attitudes in the children over a few years. So let us give enough importance to these things and see to it that they are set in our class as good class teachers. Thank you.